All right, I can't wait to play another terrible filler DLC from Ubisoft. Wait a minute, Aiden Pierce? Wrench? Ubisoft listen to the fans? I did not think this was possible. Watch Dogs Legion Bloodline is honestly one of the best things Ubisoft has made in a long, long while. Not only does the DLC bring a lot of fan service and nostalgia back with characters and references from Watch Dogs 1 and 2, but it also delivers a pretty strong narrative that is completely based around the main characters Aiden and and wrench, which felt great because a main character is where the main game's story felt extremely lacking, especially when that story dives even deeper into the psychological aspects and inner struggles of Aiden Pierce, a protagonist who I always thought to be extremely underrated in Watch Dogs 1. And the deeper exploration and closer look into his character was really cool. It made me kind of sad seeing Aiden at such an old age, but it was also really cool and I was just thankful that Ubisoft was actually able to provide provide closure and one last story with the fox. This DLC actually takes place before the events of the main story, so London is still in chaos and DedSec is a complete non-factor. And when Aiden receives a call from Jordy, great to hear him again, he decides to head to London to complete a contract and try and make amends with his nephew Jax, who he has not seen in 15 years. The last time Aiden saw Jax was in that goodbye scene from Watch Dogs 1, so it makes this journey very personal and emotional for or Aiden. This game really dives deep into Aiden's trauma and guilt as he tries to move on and retire from the vigilante slash hired gun life, and he still feels guilty about Lena's death, something he never really truly got over. Aiden Pierce just brings that main character presence and focus to this DLC story that is sorely lacking from the main game, and it just makes it so much more engaging and entertaining when you have a beloved character like Aiden to get behind. And of course, there is the other half of the equation, Wrench, the fan favorite from Watch Dogs 2, and while his story certainly isn't as interesting as Aiden's, it was still great to have him in the game. His personality is the perfect complement to Aiden's, making these two the perfect comedic duo, as Aiden is very serious and broody, while Wrench is wacky and cracks a lot of ridiculous jokes. Seriously, these two are like a buddy cop movie, and it's great. I was a little disappointed that Marcus wasn't a playable character as well, and that he's not going to be in any of the other DLCs either, but oh well, I guess we take what we can get. If you've played Watch Dogs Legion before, I'm sure you know that each character you play as and recruit has some set of special skills to give you an advantage in certain categories of the game. For Aiden, he of course has his iconic bow staff, along with special gun skills that give him increased damage with guns when you get a well-timed reload. And he even has that slow motion execute when you take down an enemy with melee and then aim at the next. And he's got Blackout, like from Watch Dogs 1, where he sends a signal to the nearby area and shuts off and disables any anything electronic, and this ability was by far one of the most useful I've ever used in this game. It takes out drones, cars, it distracts guards, it does it all, and it's extremely useful, even more so than in Watch Dogs 1. Wrench gets an SMG along with Lady Smash, his big hammer, these ninja balls that shoot flashbangs at enemies, and a big drone that you can fly on and shoot grenades with. Sounds about like Wrench. You gotta get your hands dirty sometimes. Aiden and Wrench feel pretty powerful in comparison to a lot of the recruits from the base game, as they should, and I loved using their unique abilities and weapons. It was really cool and forced you to use a different playstyle with each character, as Aiden is more of a skilled fighter, and Wrench is more of a skilled, well, uh, blowing up everything in his path kind of guy. This DLC does still have some of your typical filler Ubisoft missions, like sometimes it'll randomly have you go do a favor for somebody so they can do a favor for you, or you need to complete a couple of resistance missions that give you some nice little upgrades like new skills and weapons. But since this DLC is pretty short, there's not a ton of filler, not even close to the amount from Wrath of the Druids from Assassin's Creed Valhalla, so it really isn't that big of a deal, especially since the DLC is only around 4-5 to five hours. The Bloodline DLC certainly isn't perfect, but Ubisoft listened to their fans, brought some of the beloved characters of the series back, and provided a lot of fan service with a deep and enjoyable conclusion to the story of Aiden Pierce. In fact, I'd even argue this game was stronger story-wise than the story from the main game. The DLC is only around 4-5 to five hours, but with how Ubisoft likes to try and stretch everything out and make its DLCs as long as possible with lots of filler, I'd much prefer the shorter DLC. It's short and sweet, and it's only 
15 bucks, which is not bad at all. So I definitely recommend this DLC to fans of Watch Dogs 1 and 2 who loved Aiden Pierce and Wrench and want to play as them once again. There's also some cool little cameos from other characters you might be familiar with. But yeah, this DLC did not disappoint us, so thank you Ubisoft. Thank you for not screwing this up. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see my original review for Watch Dogs Legion, or even my reviews for Watch Dogs 1 and Watch Dogs 2 as well, I'll leave the links for those in the description, so feel free to check them out. I also have a link to my Discord server if you want to discuss or maybe find people to play some games with as well. If you're new, consider subscribing for more videos like this in the future. And other than that, thanks for watching and have a great day everybody.